Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. My name is Heather Lynn, I'm the owner of Lobo Designs, and I'm here today with an Adobe Illustrator and Lightburn tutorial showing you how to engrave a name on a Tumblr using a Pyburn 4.0. So let's get started. I'm going to start by importing an SVG of my son's name in his own handwriting. He wrote it himself and he's very proud, so I'm going to engrave this on a Tumblr for him. So I'm going to hit Command Shift P or Control Shift P as in place, and I'm going to place the SVG that I made of his handwriting anywhere on my artboard. Right now it's about nine inches wide and I don't need it to be that big for a Tumblr. So the first thing that you wanna do for your Tumblr is gauge how big you want your design to be. If you want it to wrap all the way around the Tumblr itself, you wanna make sure that you measure correctly and set it up as a wrap. I personally like to see the names facing forward, so I stick with roughly three and a half to four inches wide on my 30, I believe they're 30 ounce tumblers. So they're a little bit wider. If you have a different size tumbler, you may wanna make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, depending on the design and the style that you prefer. For this one, I'm gonna go with 3.5 to four inches wide on the same tumbler that I normally use for the width. So right now I'm gonna take this entire thing and I'm going to change the width to, let's say 3.75. And the next thing that I wanna do is take this, I wanna change it to a blue fill because that's the setting that I'm using in Lightburn. And I'm also going to rotate it at a 270 degree angle. So you can either do that by going up here into this rotate panel and entering 270 degrees, or you can undo that. You can select this, hold down shift, hover over the right corner up here at the top and rotate it yourself to a 270 degree angle right here. And then you can copy and paste it directly into Lightburn. So I'm going to copy this, Command C or Control C. I'm gonna hop over into Lightburn and I'm going to do Command V or Control V. And now we have our design inside Lightburn. It is set to the correct settings up here that I use for tumblers. And we can work on setting the rotary up in my machine so that I can walk you through how to engrave tumblers. Once your controller is set, you're going to want to go into the Z slash U menu. And you're going to right away, that's how I remember, right is away. You're gonna lower your Z axis all the way to the bottom. Once it's all the way at the bottom, you may get an error that says the hard limit. You can just hit escape to get out of there. And now I'm going to set up my rotary. The first thing that you're going to do is you're gonna plug your rotary into the port over here. I'm gonna open up this front door using my little lock. We're gonna open this door. Away. And this is your rotary port. So this is where your pie burn will be plugged into. So just give me a few minutes and I'm gonna set this up. Now that the rotary is enabled and everything is ready to be set up, we can go into edit machine settings. And the first thing that I do is wait and see if it loads. I'm glad that this happened because I wanted to show you this. If you get the error that says communication with controller failed, you can go over to your machine, hit the escape button, wait a second, and then come back here and try and load this again. Up into edit machine settings and now we're reading the controller settings properly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click load. I'm going to pick the Pyburn LB set file. Make sure that everything looks good here. 25,000 steps per rotation. It says pulses per rotation, but it's steps per rotation in the rotary setup, which we'll check in a second. So this looks good. I'm going to click the word right, wait until it says controller settings written successfully, and then I'm gonna click okay. Now we're gonna enable the rotary. We're going to go up into Tools, Rotary Setup. We're going to check and make sure that Enable Rotary is on. We have Roller selected, not Chuck, because this is not a Chuck Rotary. So if Roller should be selected. Enable Rotary should be highlighted. 25,000 steps per rotation for the Pyburn V4. 
62 millimeters for the roller diameter. This changes to 61.99 because I changed back to inches for a moment to check the object diameter. So if you're measuring 61.99 millimeters rounds up to 62, it's 62 millimeters. That is the roller diameter for the Pyburn V4. The object diameter is the diameter of the tumbler that you'll be using. So if you have calipers, you wanna make sure that you're measuring straight across the top. If it's a tapered cup, make sure that you're measuring across the width of the cup at the point where you're going to be designing. So what I am using right now is 91.440 millimeters, which is 3.6 inches, which is not the entire diameter of the cup that I'm using, but it is the diameter of the area of the cup that I'll be engraving on, if that makes sense. So the top of the cup that I'm using measures around 3.7, and I'm using 3.6 because I'm gonna shift the design down a little bit to the thinner, slimmer part of the cup. The circumference will automatically adjust based on the diameter that you add into here, and you're just going to click OK. Now the rotary is set up, and we can hop back over to the machine to focus on the cup, make sure that everything is level, and ready for the rotary to engrave the tumbler. So now that this has been set up, the first thing that I want to do is make sure that the pie burn is centered correctly and it is lined correctly from left to right. And how I do that is by looking at the red dot, I align it first to the center of this knob. So I'm going to move this all the way over so we're in the center of this knob. Just right there, you can see that right there. And now I'm going to slide it all the way to the left side and I want it to be centered in the middle of this, uh, I guess we'll call that a bolt. So now that we have that lined up and it's centered on the left side and on the right side, we can make sure that the cup is level. So I'm going to place the level on here so what we can do here is we can raise and lower this accordingly. So if this needs to be raised, I believe, so we get that bubble in the center of the level. And there we go. So that should be good. Now we are level and I wanna make sure that we're focused on the cup. I use a defocus of nine millimeters and I manually focus with the wedge. So I'm gonna slide this over to where I would normally be on the cup, which would be just about here usually. So right about there. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab the wedge tool. And what I do is I make sure that the wedge is focused to around nine millimeters. So right now we're right at around eight millimeters. I'm gonna lower that just a little bit just to make sure that we have a little bit more of a defocus. So we can go up here. So now we are level, we are defocused, and we are ready for an engrave. I'm gonna hop back over into Lightburn so we can frame this and then we'll get started on the engrave. Now we're back in Lightburn. I have my design ready to go. I am framing from center. So what that means is over here, you wanna recognize this rectangular box as the sheet or the object that you're engraving. If you want your design to be centered and you wanna frame it from center, you would pick the middle dot. If you want your design to start from, say, the top right-hand corner, you can click the top right-hand corner and what it will do is it will know to place your design over here. If you start at top left, it'll know to place your design to the right and lower. Same for starting at bottom left, it'll know to go up and to the right and so on and so forth. So for tumblers, what I do is I pick my center point and I frame from center. That way I know exactly where it is going to land on the cup. So I am now framing from center. We're gonna hop back over into the laser. I'm gonna show you how to frame and the only thing that I do here is I click frame. Now we're back on the laser and before I frame this, I wanna show you something that's very important to avoid what we call slop over errors. So I'm going to show you here, up here, you see how this, the, my x-axis is the arm. The y-axis, you wanna have set around 300 for tumbler engraves. If you have it set to zero or if you have it set closer to 600, it won't do a full rotation. So 300 is in the middle. So I set it to right around 300 just to make sure that we don't have any issues if we're engraving something that wraps all the way around a tumbler. So now that we have this ready, I'm going to show you how to frame. 
So we have the origin over here, and I'm going to click frame and light burn. What it does is it spins the cup around and shows you exactly where the design is going to be framed at. That looks like it will fit perfectly for me. So the only thing I have left to do is make sure I put on my protective eyewear because I have the sensor tripped. I'm going to turn on the blower and we're going to start this in grief. Okay, so it doesn't look like it did much because of the fact that we still have to clean it off, but this cup is finished. So we're going to take this out of the rotary. I'm gonna move that arm off to the side. We're gonna pull this cup out. Like I said, it doesn't look like much right now, but I'll show you after I clean it up what it looks like. And there it is, cleaned and engraved and ready to be used. My son's gonna be so excited. Now what I'm going to show you before I end this tutorial is how to change your machine back to the flat settings should you wanna keep using it without turning it off. And now our tumbler is engraved, we're back in Lightburn and we're going to disable the rotary and change the settings back just to make sure that everything is back to normal for your machine when you wanna use it on the flat settings. So I'm going to get rid of this artwork because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to go up into tools, rotary setup, and I'm going to check the box that says enable rotary to make sure it's red. Then I'm gonna click okay. Next, I'm gonna go up into edit machine settings. I'm going to click load. I'm going to load the flat settings. And I'm going to click right. After that's done and it says controller settings written successfully, you can click okay. Now, if you are going to continue using your machine on the regular flat settings, you'll want to go over to your machine and hit the reset button. Make sure you either hit the reset button or turn your machine off and back on again if you're going to continue using it after using the rotary. And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.